Thank you for joining. Uh, we will start or commence very shortly. I'm just going to give another 30 seconds. Okay, I appreciate everyone's valuable time. So um, as everyone keeps filtering it, I'll just start commencing now. So thank you so much for joining the Adobe Fly Fly, Web Fly, Fly webinar today. I uh, really appreciate your valuable time at this very busy time of the year. So we'll go through it now. Just over to the agenda, please. So my name is Duncan Boyle. I'm the Adobe Business Manager at Ingram Micro across Australia and New Zealand. Uh, we also have Sushant Sagal from uh, Ed Solutions Consultant, uh, currently in New Zealand, but we are bringing a solutions consultant to Australia as well. And I'll let uh, Sushant introduce himself later and give you a bit of insight around his role and how he's valuable um, to our resellers. And we also have Sarah Teleki or, or Talik, um, a solutions consultant from Adobe, and um, who will be presenting on the Firefly solution today. So just quickly to go through the agenda. There'll be an introduction to the Adobe Express, um, and that's obviously with the demonstration, accelerating content creation with Express and Firefly. And then we'll also go through learning how to, you can leverage Adobe Firefly through the channel partner offers. And then we'll give you a bit of insight around Ingram Micro, and then we'll go straight to Q&A. Over to you, Sarah. Awesome, thanks so much, Duncan. Um, yeah, so I'll jump straight into it. Um, I'm here to talk about Adobe Express today. Um, uh, so first and foremost, what Adobe Express is, is kind of like your all-in-one content creation app. It's a new program to the uh, creative cloud. Um, and if you have a look at what Express looks like, um, this is the kind of um, home page of Express. And if you're familiar with any of our other tools, you can see that relative to those tools, this is much more accessible, much more approachable um, for a non-designer. And it's designed to be that way because um, you know, only a certain subsection of, of the world are professional designers, but the vast, vast, vast majority are not. And when you are creating content, you want everyone to be a part of that um, that that sort of experience, especially uh, when you work for a big, big, big company and you want to uh, keep things on brand. Um, if a kind of fun way to think of it is it's Adobe's industry leading technology made easy. So it uses the same technology as what's in our creative cloud uh, tools. It's just much more, uh, uh, it's simplified, made a lot more um, basic and, and all put under the one roof. Um, so if, yeah, you can create majority, most people can create majority of stuff in Express, but then of course, if you wanna go deep with anything, then our creative cloud um, is, and our pro apps are definitely the one for you. Um, before I get into the kind of value proposition uh, of Express, I wanted to show you how we at Adobe uh, use Express. So we just had a uh, creativity conference in uh, Los Angeles. Um, it's our annual big flagship event. And what we actually did is we had salespeople going, marketing, pe marketing going, and obviously we work for a creative company at Adobe, but it doesn't mean everyone is necessarily a designer, right? So what we did is we um, set up all of our employees up with some Express templates so that they could go in and quickly um, tweak, uh, you know, some lovely uh, professionally designed templates and share their experience whilst they were there. And it was very, very easy for them to do because Ex Express is very, very easy to use. And um, this is actually a little video of our welcoming night where we had lots of different customers attend and we had an Express activation going and people loved it. And uh, what we ended up having is lots of content uh, for our customers to then post that on their social media and share that they were there. So this is really important because employee networks, uh, LinkedIn showed that employee networks actually have 10 times the amount of following as um, usually the companies they work for. So it'd be one thing to have Adobe do a lovely post um, on their own socials about Adobe Max, but um, it's a whole nother thing if we get all of our employees um, getting in on that as well. And it's a huge, huge opportunity missed if you are not um, extending your brand to your employees and getting your employees involved 
in the experience. Um, so that's certainly what we did. And um, yeah, it's a huge, huge value add that everyone really should be thinking about. Um, so I'll skip to the next slide here. Um, so we're now we're on to sort of the value prop of Express, right? Uh, the value prop of Express is it connects in your, your design professional team with the rest of the organization in a way that allows your, uh, the, everyone in all your employees in that organization to self-serve on content and contribute to the um, digital footprint of, of your company. Um, because sort of beforehand, usually that, that core design team would um, hold all of those hero assets and hold all of those key campaign imagery, um, but it kind of then gets stuck with them. It doesn't get shared out um, in, in the most efficient way. And, you know, if anyone spoke to um, employees that have gone through, uh, uh, companies that have gone through a rebrand, it's usually the bane of their existence to see old logos floating around. So we want a centralized source um, of truth where we can share, um, you know, professionally designed on brand content and, and, and have um, no confusion there. Um, this doesn't eliminate the need for those creative design teams. In fact, it's actually integral that um, it starts with them because they are the designers, they are the brand um, owners, they, they know what your brand's um, voice and aesthetic is. Um, so we need the buy-in of the creative design teams to set up these templates for our employees to use. And we think about it in, in the way of marketing, we think about it uh, in two sort of schools of marketing. So you've got your, um, your hero marketing, which is where your creative design teams should be focused on the high uh, level uh, or high value brand assets and brand campaigns where, where the brand's going. On, on a larger scale, but then we also need to have agile marketing. Now with social media, agile marketing is so, so, so important. And Express basically enables um, all of our employees to jump in on agile marketing, post, you know, whilst they're at an event, create um, uh, social media content based on things that are actually happening. Um, so yeah, so Express really allows you to unlock agile marketing. Um, whilst being sort of guided by your design team. So you're not stepping out of, um, of your branded guidelines. So just a couple of people who we're seeing really, really appreciate Express. So obviously you've got your marketers who really appreciate Express because basically now they can really um, keep up with the pace of um, uh, content demands by um, self-servicing. So what if, so long as they've got a template that's been set up by their design team, they can go in and update uh, for you know local area marketing campaigns or um, they don't need to rely on studio as much to make quick edits, quick mock-ups, they can brief their studios very, very quickly. It just really, really helps them to have a creative tool to either um, create you know final assets or um, even just create briefing assets um, because now they have a creative tool and it just makes the briefing process uh, get it get basically get it right the first time um, because you can actually um, add a visual element to what you're um, briefing your studios to do. Um, but then secondly, as I mentioned, um, your HR and your corporate comms teams, so more internal. So if you think of marketing as external, external they get a lot of big value from Express, but internally, that internal brand um, and the way your employees lean in on brand, um, you know, your HR departments are absolutely loving a tool like Express. Um, you know, there's a Forbes article out there, I've quoted a little bit of it here, um, but it basically says, I'll quote, I'll read the quote, it says, shaping employee experiences through the framework of your brand helps you to find and retain the best and most committed uh, talent for your organization. So again, it just comes down to, it just comes down to increasing your digital footprint, making you all seem like a cohesive unit. And that just does, it's sort of on the same value chain as um, customer experience. Employee and customer experience are actually very, very interlinked. So being able to share branded content with your employees is, is pretty key. Um, so I, I wanna talk about how uh, Firefly, Adobe's generative AI technology and Express are kind of like the perfect one-two punch in terms of allowing uh, businesses to keep up with the demand for content. So the generative AI element, it's useful for everyone, but particularly your creative design teams. Um, it's 
really quickening up that work. It takes away the grunt work of like having to, you know, clone bits of imagery uh, and, and create briefing documents. Like generative AI is just really uh, accelerating um, how fast people can uh, create content. Um, and then Express, uh, as, as an extension of that, is, is helping people operationalize that content as well. So it is a really, um, and I'll show you a little bit of this in my demo, but they, they, are, they really sing together. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll leave that to the demo to really showcase that. Um, but I just wanted to talk about our generative AI technology for those who hadn't, who haven't maybe heard of it. It's called Firefly, um, and it's essentially commercially safe and uh, de well, is designed to be commercially safe. And it's also got a, a really great ethical framework around it, which is really unique to the other major players of generative AI in the market right now. Um, the reason why, the big reason why our AI is commercially safe, is because it has been trained. Our data set is um, our Adobe stock library, meaning that our data set is free and legal to use, So that, it, which means that any output our generative AI creates, it's not ripping from intellectual property or, or anything like that. So you can see if I typed in Mickey Mouse eating an ice cream at Disneyland, it'd give me a great result, but it wouldn't uh, give me, the, you know, as we all know who Mickey Mouse is, it wouldn't give me those results um, because that's not my IP to use. And this is very much a feature, uh, not a flaw, because essentially it's protecting the end user um, from accidentally um, stumbling across it, upon any copyright um, imagery, which is really fabulous. And then we've also got um, you know, a, a big ethical framework around our AI as well. So um, unless you actually indicate that you want uh, you know, specific races or genders, um, if you pop in just a, a generic prompt and you don't specify these things, it will give you a nice, um, collection of, of lots of uh, different races and genders and things like that. Um, because as you know, if we scrape the internet, sometimes you do see a bit of bias just based on what um, people tend to gravitate towards. And it doesn't necessarily mean that that's true. It just means that that answer is popular. So we um, really try to protect against that um, in many, many different ways. So I'm very, very proud um, to be working at Adobe, knowing that we are approaching this uh, generative AI space sensibly, um, because it's going to be a major player as we all, as we all move forward into the next sort of technical uh, wave and way of working. But it really is going to depend on you know how we approach it, which brings me to um, ethical standards around AI and and the industry standards that we're seeing. So this is. Um, uh, a statement from the White House, they put out an executive order basically saying, look, we all need to be establishing some industry standards around this. We can't just be um, cowboys in the wild, wild west. Um, so it's it's really um, like the industry is, is very much um, forming around um, what are those industry standards going to be. So it's cool that we at Adobe slot right into that because it's going to definitely um, by virtue of creating these industry standards, standards count out a lot of other players um, just based on their um, unethical approach. Which brings me to the content authenticity initiative. So um, this is not an Adobe uh, uh, only event, a uh, uh, group, it's, but it is a group of over 2,000 um, huge, huge brand names, as you can see, like the ones up here. Um, and they're all committed uh, as part of the content authenticity initiative into, uh, they're all committed to creating um, some industry standards around generative AI, and they all contribute in their own way. So Leica, for example, is making sure um, metadata is automatically fused to any content um, taken on, on their cameras, just so we can authenticate um, where uh, this imagery is coming from and, and, and make sure that we can verify things like that. So if they do show up online, we can check the metadata on an image. If you think of it like a nutrition label, you can check the nutrition label and say, okay, you know, this was, temp, uh, you know, generative AI was used to edit this or, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So Adobe's contribution um, as part of the content authenticity initiative is content credentials, which is very similar to what I was just talking about with uh, Leica. It's metadata effectively. So all of our content that is uh, created by generative AI automatically gets um, a stamp of, um, I'll just move this so you, can, uh, you guys can see, automatically gets a stamp, uh, a nutrition label attached to it, where you can uh, go through and, and 
really assess um, what went into this photo. We're not stopping people from editing photos using generative AI, but we do think the end user needs to be able to have some um, sort of view into this, just so if we do see like a particularly confronting image or controversial image online, um, we can go in and, and check that transparency before we believe it. Because as you know, um, in the industry right now, uh, yeah, it's just the way the world is right now, there's a lots of um, alarming imagery and you want to make sure that um, you're not being misled by mis or disinformation. Um, so that uh, I'm going to go into a demo now um, to talk through Express and why Express is um, really, really fabulous. Um, but the kind of key, the two key differentiators of Ex uh, Express um, relates to firstly the fact that it's powered by Adobe's generative AI, which you've heard me talk about. It's commercially safe. Um, it's it's ethical. So a lot of the our other competitors in this space um, are using third-party generative AI um, suppliers. Um, to power these tools. And, you know, that creates a lot of issues. Um, you know, uh, you know, Canva's um, generative AI technology is actually being sued at the moment um, for unethical practices. They basically um, stole from Getty Images uh, library, uh, content library, and used um, that library um, without permission to train the model. And so uh, that's obviously not so great. Um, whereas uh, Express uh, is using its own technology. So that's also really great for security as well. It all sits within house. If there's a breach over at mid journey, it doesn't really affect us. So um, it's, it's good when all your data is kind of kept under the one umbrella. So there's that, the fact that it's powered by our generative AI technology. Um, and then secondly, um, the fact that it is uh, as part of the creative cloud. Now, this is a game changer when it comes to enterprise, um, because when you've got your design team, your design team are always going to be working in the creative cloud. It is industry standard, like it is what they go to uni to learn. So essentially, you're always going to be running into the creative cloud at some point. Um, so when you are using a, a sort of branch out tool or an extension tool like this to also create content, it's really helpful when it all sits within the Adobe um, ecosystem because of the way assets are linked and, and the way that um, those assets are connected. So I'm gonna show you uh, that right now. So, so firstly, yeah, this is Adobe Express. So let's say I'm an employee at, um, at weekend, uh, luxury adventure camps, but I'm not, that's an imaginary um, uh, company that we use to demo, but let's say I'm, I'm an employee here and I need to start creating some content. Um, I'm a marketer and I need to start creating some social media content, um, but I'm not a designer. What I can do is I can quickly navigate to my stuff and you can see if I go into brands here, I've got lots of different brands that I house within Express. So if I was a weekend employee, that would probably relate to, you know, all the various brands that we maybe have um, at weekend. Obviously, for, in my instance, it's got all the brands we work with, so that's why I kind of skipped right past just um, for um, the sake of um, making sure that their assets are um, not really being advertised that much. Um, but yeah, so I would go into my brands and you can see here we have our uh, logos, our color schemes, um, fonts and graphics all kept within Express, as well as the very, very handy um, Express templates. Now this is the bread and butter of Express because basically all the design work is done for me and I just, um, all I need to do is go in and simply um, click the template that I want to use and then I can open that file up. Now whilst that's loading, I want to now speak to the idea of interoperability, which is that idea of it all being in the same um, ecosystem. Um, so, you know, here's me, a marketer, all the way over in Express, um, you know, working on working on a project, but let's say, you know, I'm swap, switching hats right now and now I'm the designer. So I'm a different person. I'm not Sarah anymore. I'm someone else. I'm a designer and, and here's, and I'm working on that same template because it was me that designed that template and then, and then popped it into Express. Now I've, I've seen from my boss, okay, boss, um, it's breast cancer awareness month. So what we're going to do is we're going to, um, add a little breast cancer awareness ribbon to all of our um, assets for the next month. So we need to make sure that any content that goes out has that breast cancer awareness uh, thing on it. Now that would be a huge ask to make sure everyone updates the, the, the logo accordingly um, if you wanted to do something like that um, in any other 
scenario that's not uh, the Adobe Creative Cloud. But what's really fabulous is because everything is all linked, me, the designer, can go into our logo uh, library, which is, again, this is the same library we just saw open in Express. It's also in my Illustrator tool. If I go in and edit um, this logo from its original source file and I grab our little breast cancer awareness ribbon, let's just pop this here. I'm just going to use one of our fancy uh, intertwine features here to quickly just make this look good. There we go. So we popped a little ribbon on our logo. And if you watch here, I've just clicked save there. And you can see in the library uh, that has also saved in the library, which means if I go back into uh, my Adobe Express document, I can just need to give it a little uh, quick moment to, to refresh. But what this will do is it will actually update uh, my uh, weekend uh, template as well. So meaning that if any content goes out, because you can see my linked asset has cha has changed. It's notified me there. Um, any content that goes out is is using the latest uh, brand imagery, which is just huge, especially for enterprise. Because if we are getting people using you know tools like Express or you know perhaps even our competitors, um, this gets to a really scary place of our brand just going absolutely haywire and um, people creating content that they think is on brand and it's not. So we need the creative design team to remain in control, um, but we also want people to be leaning in and creating content. So you can see this ability is, is really huge and this, this kind of link, interoperability linkage, is, is really special to Adobe and just, yeah, huge for enterprise. Um, so, so that's obviously very, very fabulous. Um, now, if I want to um, replace, let's say this is an invitation and I want to um, uh, swap this out with another piece of imagery, um, what I can do, oh, I'm just gonna quickly ungroup this. Um, what I can do is I can replace that imagery as well really, really simply. So uh, let's say, for example, I uh, want to replace um, this, this uh, templated image there with, um, with an image from my um, Adobe Stock Library. I can do that really, really simply. Um, so let's just use this one for, exam for an example, just um, bring that crop in a little better. Um, so it, you know, the way, because this is so easy to use, it makes um, this self-serviceability um, really fabulous. Because a lot of the times we rely on studios to put something quite simple together. And now if you've got a template like this, um, you don't have to rely on that. Now, what's really great about this is, so you've got an imagery, you pulled it from the Adobe Stock Library, which also comes as part of your Express. You can also make some really quick edits using generative AI in Express. So you don't have to have a lot of Photoshop experience to make some fun edits. So for example, I'm gonna like, let's say um, this is for a Christmas campaign. What I can do here is I can use my generative AI um, functionality here. Um, to actually in-paint, um, you know, a Santa hat or even make edits. Like if there was a logo on, on this lady's shirt or um, something I didn't want in the picture, I could use my brush tool like I'm doing here to brush over, you know, the area that I'm wanting to edit for. And then I could either, um, in this case, I'm going to um, instruct this to create a Santa hat for me. Um, but I could also instruct this in quite plain language to remove something for me as well. So I could say, get this out of here, I don't want it remove, and, and uh, generative AI would know, um, would, it does a pretty good job of detecting the foreign object and knowing what it is you want to be removed. So you can see like that looks pretty fabulous. If you look at the way the lighting is hitting that hat, it's pretty unbelievable. So all this stuff is, um, is really, really great. Um, for uh, your knowledge workers to be able to have access to. They don't need Photoshop experience um, to be able to make quick edits. And they also don't need to waste the time on design teams and studios, which just wastes time and money and, is, and isn't an effective use of their time. Um, now, in terms of what we can do once we've actually created, uh, we've tweaked our template, um, we can actually share this out uh, to social media directly um, because that is, uh, integrated within Express. So really, really handy if you are a social media manager, you can publish all directly from um, Adobe Express. That's really, really great. 
or if you need to take this through an approvals process um, and you use uh, AEM assets, so anyone that has AEM assets, um, which uh, the reason why you would use AEM assets, especially for marketers, is to um, take content through an approvals process, add tagging onto it. Um, there's lots of different reasons why you would use a solution like this. Um, you can actually send this off to AEM assets as well um, because it is uh, an add-on here. So you can actually save this into your um, DAM there and um, that's, that's really great that it integrates there. Um, but if you don't use AEM and you maybe just use a Dropbox or a Google Drive or a OneDrive, we have um, that as part of the environment as well. So if that's how your team um, tends to work, uh, we definitely accommodate uh, for that as well. So uh, usually um, most uh, dams are covered uh, in the add-ons. So really, really handy that it doesn't just have to be all Adobe um, where you, um, in order for you to save back and, and share with your team. Um, let's say as well, if I wanted to get some feedback on this, I've also got the ability to um, invite colleagues of mine um, to co-edit or just even leave comments as well. Um, so I'm just going to, um, you know, it's just as easy as popping in someone's name, giving them either um, commenting or editing permissions. And let's say I've invited them to comment. What they can do here is um, actually go into the comments section and um, use this pin tool here to actually place comments um, on the piece of work. So if you are working on a project um, together, really, really handy to have this ability um, to leave um, comments. So I'll just show you there. You can pop a comment there, submit. And this this is the exact works the exact same way in the um, Creative Cloud as well. This is the exact same experience. So it's, it's great that we use a lot of the same technical language as our Creative Cloud tools um, within Express. Um, so people can actually start to familiarize themselves with how the, the larger Creative Cloud works by just getting started in Express. So that's really, really handy. Um, there's so much I want to show you with, uh, with Express, but um, you know, there's only so much I, I can show you in this small amount of time. So I will um, try, uh, I'm going to move on and if we've got time to come back, I, I actually know I'll just show you the quick actions here and I won't get into it. You got your quick actions as well. And we were just chatting before we got um, started. Um, we've got animate uh, from audio as a quick action in here. And this is so fabulous. You basically record some audio into your computer and it will actually build out and animate an entire little character that you can then use in like learning and development um, demos or things like that. So this ability to create really high-end multimedia assets allows uh, people in organizations to create engaging content, which is so important in a digitally crowded um, kind of landscape. Um, but I'm going to jump over to uh, Photoshop now and just to quickly show you, um, this is where we would find our content credentials in Photoshop. So you can see here, we've got a little content credentials window. Um, and if I go preview here, um, again, we can actually preview the nutrition label um, of, of our work here. Hmm. Button seems to be being a little bit sticky um, for me today, but that's okay. I'll just open up another file. Um, yeah, let's use this one. Oh, let's try this one then. Sorry, you'll have to excuse me, I was demoing um, something uh, with an image of myself. Yeah, but if you go into the Windows tab here, you can see we've got a content credentials window. And if you just switch that on, um, all you need to do is enable your content credentials. And what it will do is it'll actually um, create a nutrition label for you, um, which doesn't seem appear to be working uh, at the moment, but I promise you it, it does normally work. I'm sure I've just... Um, broken something before starting. Um, but that is where you will find your content credentials. And um, if you load this image into the content credentials website, um, that metadata follows it wherever it goes, um, unless someone goes in and actually tries to um, rip it away, which can be done. But this is why we are um, pushing for industry standards, right? Like you can Actually, there are ways to take out, out those um, content credentials, but it's one of those things that if, if if you see something surface on the news and it doesn't have content credentials, you're probably not going to believe it. So that's why that um, industry standard piece is really important. 
um, because people are just going to become more and more educated in terms of how they consume things online. Um, so people will be looking out for content credentials, even if they're not on there. And if they're not on there, well, then people go, well, I don't know if I believe it. So um, that's a big question we often get uh, when it comes to the metadata. Like, what if someone takes a screenshot of an image? It's like, yeah, it can be done, but, you know, people aren't going to take it seriously if, if, it's, if that is uh, what happens. Um, just another thing on the interoperability piece as well. This is the, probably the last thing I'll show you. Um, it Express works with all of our um, other products. So it works with uh, PDF files as well. And in this instance where you've got a document, right, you've got an annual report, someone's put this together for you. Um, but it's, you know, you need to quickly maybe perhaps, oh, that's not the right headshot we want to use. You you might want to um, make a few little changes. You want to um, put in place an image in there. Um, Express gives you the ability to do this yourself without having to then, you know, spend a lot more money and send that back to uh, a studio or an agency or something like that. So what you can do is from Acrobat, you can open up um, Express and what this will do is it'll, it'll take your Acrobat folder and open it up into Express and make it fully editable. So you can still edit your text um, in Express. You can combine other PDF files into this uh, document as well. Um, and again, it's just really handy to have this functionality as a knowledge worker um, and not always need to rely on designers to do stuff that is it's pretty, pretty simple, right? So again, what I can do is I can come in and I can um, use my brand library here, use the latest, um, the latest and greatest logo here, pop that in there. Um, I can use my replace tool to uh, replace uh, our um, headshot with with a new one. Let's just. Uh, um, I'm going to use a, a, an image from my own machine now as well. So um, you can actually upload your own images as well. Um, so in this instance, I'll just use one of me there um, and throw a little crop on that. And then. I'm going to show you now how uh, great it is to use uh, generative AI in Photoshop as well, um, but to show you kind of the the how useful it is to have these easy to uh, understand Photoshop abilities within Express. So if I go here, let's say I want to get a photo of my colleague in here, but the only photo I have of my colleague is this awful one where she has a COVID mask um, being worn the wrong way. And now instead of asking uh, for um, an image that I don't have or asking for a reshoot, what I can easily do as a non-designer is again use this generative AI um, feature and again use this brush tool and this is the example I was talking about before where you can just quickly highlight what it is you want to remove and then as I said just direct it quite plainly to remove it and it'll it'll know what you're talking about. It knows that there's a foreign object in there and what you want is just to see what's behind that object and it does a really really great job of that. Um, it gives you three options. It always will give you three options, just like in Photoshop. And if you're not happy with the results, you can always um, regenerate. So this kind of um, use case is just, it, everyone needs to be able to do this in their organization because content is very much a part of how we do business now. Um, but then that is sort of to how to make edits on an, on an image that already exists, but also you can totally generate a brand new image from scratch as well using the text to image uh, feature. So um, what you do there is you go into your media tab and you've got Firefly inbuilt within Express. And what I can do here, let's say I wanna do like a mountain uh, region at sunset. Um, and then you can actually um, go through, you don't have to be a but be able to explain visually exactly what you want because we understand that that is actually quite challenging being able to describe um, exactly what it is that's in your mind because a lot of us don't have that kind of um, understanding of um, creating a brief like that unless you work closely with creative um, departments all the time. So that's why it's really handy that you have these options, right? So do I want it to be graphic, artistic, or do I want it to be photorealistic? Well, I know I want it to be photorealistic, so I can click that. Or, or, or maybe do I want it like what, what kind of visual um, appearance do I want it to have? I can just thumb through these options here and get myself closer to where 
uh, I, I'm looking to go by simply um, using visual prompts to help me uh, inform my prompt. So let's go bioluminescent here. And then once you've added all those stylistic parameters, um, it will uh, generate an image, which is editable. So once, once this is generated, you can actually then continue to um, add tweaks and filters and things like that. Um, so like, like for example, I really, really like this, but maybe I want to um, change the sky. I would then go into generative fill here and use my in-painting uh, brush uh, to do a quick sky replacement, like dramatic clouds, dramatic clouds. And like you can, you can continue to build and build and build. And the ability to do this is really, really great for um, creating briefing documents. Um, you don't, you know, like the kind of joke between marketers and designers is that um, designers never get a great brief the first time. And it's a big arduous process going back and forth, deciding, um, you know, what, what it is they were actually trying to explain in their head. Um, well, the ability to um, actually create it as, as a rough go around for the first time using things like Firefly, it's just a game changer for how much time and money we can now save on, on going back and forth. So I'm just going to do one last thing. Let's go put a plane in there, a new object. Um, and it's really, really great. So this is uh, Adobe Express. I am conscious of time. I do, I do want to wrap it up there. Um, but um, yeah, if anyone has any questions, please, please do reach out uh, to me. But yeah. Thanks, Miss Sarah. That, that was incredible. And I think we all love the fact that we, uh, we multi-thread through our customers. And this is really a, a cool solution that just takes it outside of just marketing and really drives it into the HR, the operations and sales team. So it's really yeah. a lesson. It's a fantastic conversation to lead into other products and solutions that you're offering your customers. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then, as, as Sarah said, there is question time. Just bear with me. I appreciate it. it's very difficult to have resellers any more than 30 minutes, so I'm completely aware of that. I will jump into this over the next five minutes and we'll get to question time. But for everyone that doesn't know, just introducing the team uh, across Australia and New Zealand, we are missing one, which is Diana, the renewal specialist over there. But Sushant is, is sort of coming in from, from New Zealand. But before we get to him and introduce him, uh, we have Hemant, the product manager. We also have Sonia and Emily, the, the PDM, in, in really supporting and enabling our, you, you as resellers in supporting your customers in the Adobe experience. And then we also have Ahmed and, and Ellie, um, yeah, their renewal specialists that will guide you and support you throughout the renewal process as well. Um, to reach out and contact any of these people, um, it's manned by adobe at ingrammicro.com.au and we'll support you with any requests you have, whether program or pricing or any other questions that we can reach out to Adobe and gain that support. Shushant, before we move on, please introduce yourself as a new role at Ingram Micro, not only supporting resellers, but end users regarding Adobe. Hey folks, so yeah, I'm Sushant. So I'm the new kid on the block. Well, not a kid anymore, but <laughs> I'm a kid with Adobe because I've been uh, playing with a lot of the products set here. Uh, I've come from a video editing background as well, so I know some of the tool set already. Uh, but yeah, please reach out to me if it's anything to do with training, enablement sessions for yourself, for the end users as well. Any product knowledge questions, please send it my way. Thank you. Thank you. Next slide, please. Fantastic. This is uh, some contacts and resources that we're happy to share with you. Just reach out to the, as I said, the adobe at ingrammicro.com.au, um, but give you some key insight around certain areas and supporting you and uh, enabling you to have a seamless experience when working with Adobe through Ingram Micro. And next one. Thanks, Sarah. And we come to the incentive page. This is the most exciting piece. Obviously, you can't compete against Adobe Express and Firefly and Sarah's, but uh, Ingram Micro offer upfront rebate on Adobe Deal Reg and competitive switches. Meanwhile, meaning that if approved, we remove the rebate percentage from your reseller buy price in our quote, not off MSRP. The table in this slide is Adobe's current incentives, which are reviewed on a monthly basis. So look, please note this may change in December, but we'll make sure we update you. The deal registration is for net new licenses only with a minimum purchase requirement. As you can see in the second column, each product on offer has a minimum quantity requirement. 
The second last column reflects the dill reg percentage for that product. And then the last column shows the eligible segments. So the competitive switch is 50% rebate for moving, uh, moving a custom from a com competing document cloud vendor to Adobe. So please feel free to reach out if you have any questions on that to our team. Otherwise, you'll be very shortly being able to um, ask any questions. Over to the next slide, please, Sarah. And here we are, Q&A, right on time. Uh, so the, the offer that we have today, I know it's quite difficult sometimes, but uh, for the first two people, or is it three this time? First three people, how exciting, get a opportunity for a $40 Uber Eats voucher. So please feel free to add into the chat and then uh, we'll respond accordingly. Just while you're thinking about writing that question, um, Sarah, my seven-year-old son is probably the most energetic child you've ever met. I'm sure I'd be challenged by some of the parents on this call. And um, if you want to come up against me, then you're more than happy to have babysit my child anytime you want. But um, he used, um, or he does use now, but when I first introduced him to Firefly, he spent probably three and a half hours sitting at a table on a Friday night, which is really convenient for my wife and I. Um, playing around with fly fly and he continues to do so. So it's very intuitive and ease of use is excellent. Yeah, totally. And it's so, look, my, I'm not going to, I'm going to be careful not to compare my partner with a child, my chi yeah. a child. Um, but my um, partner, he's a director and um, he was also, when I told him about um, Firefly, he also spent hours um, using it to storyboard, to brief um, his art directors and things like that. Um, it is just one of those tools that creative people flock towards it. Like it is this funny conversation that's happening at the moment of like, oh, it's going to take people's jobs. It's absolutely not. It's it's very much sits within the remit of the creative person because, you know, a data analyst and a marketer and things like that are not going to spend their time generating imagery because uh, it's not something they're passionate about or really care to do. Um, it still just it just accelerates the um, amount of things that you can create and and it just eliminates that whole time and budget challenge that we've we've had since the dawn of time like oh would be nice but can't afford it don't have the time um, now uh, we can actually start to realize a lot of those great creative ideas with a bit of AI help. Okay, we have thank you, Sarah. There's two questions that've been asked. Um, let me have a look. Can you see the question, Sarah? No, I'm having, I don't think I can see the main chat. Our questions. Oh, I've got the questions box open, but I cannot. I am in a similar boat. Yep, we have it's there, guys. So there will go. there be any demo above? Can you guys see that one? Yeah, so Sarah, this is probably over to you. Will there be any demos um, that will be running for customers? Uh, yes, yeah, so we've got a lot of loading content within our um, tools, firstly. So um, with Express, am I still sharing my screen? Can you guys see this? Yeah, so we've got a learning tab here. So that is um, on-demand demos, uh, and you can literally scroll through uh, what, what is it you want to create, read, have a read of these titles, and um, they would be your kind of, kind of on-demand demos. But Adobe also uh, hosts a lot of webinars as well where we um, run demos to the public. Um, we also had um, big roadshow events um, next year. We've got um, Make It coming up early next year. So if you keep an eye out for Adobe Make It, um, that is when we show how to use all of this, these tools. Um, and then, of course, um, YouTube content as well. Because Express is quite a new tool, there's there's a little bit less out there on um, YouTube of how-tos and things like that. Um, I've got my own little YouTube channel, which I'm trying to solve that problem just by myself by putting some demo content out there as well. Um, but there is stuff, there's a, there's still a lot of stuff out there um, as well if you just want to go in and um, and do some self-learning. Um, so I hope that answers your question. There's a few few options for you there. Fantastic. There's also another question. Uh, is Adobe Express available for non-profits? Yes, and actually we work with non-profits to give you guys the premium version of Express um, for free. So um, whatever your interest, uh, 
if you want to reach out to me, I can connect you with the person um, who runs that that program. Uh, but yes, it is. Yep, and and charity usually or non-profits sit under education as well. Just so there's some clarity around that. Yeah. Uh, we have one final question. So congratulations to the third winner, which will be sending out your forty dollars Uber Eats voucher. Uh, is Express covered under the Partner NFR program? Oh, so I don't know too much about the partner NRF program, but I can find that out and get that answer back to you, Duncan, and maybe we can do a wrap-up email or something. Fantastic. Yep, we'll do. I'd just like Excellent. to quickly mention with the Express, yeah. there is obviously a free version out there, so anyone can use it. There's only the premium version only has like certain features uh, which are missing and the stock that is some of it is premium versus free. Fantastic. Yeah. Scott, for those interested, that is, um, these are some of the differences from the uh, premium to uh, the free version. Um, basically, premium is really great for enterprise because you can share branded assets and things like that. Um, but it doesn't mean, basically, if you create a template like for an event or something and you, you create a little QR code for people to jump in and, and remix a template and post to their social media, um, they will still be able to access that template that you've created for them um, on the free version of Express. So just it's, it's more a business functionality um, uh, and an enterprise use case where you would probably need the premium. Okay. And there's actually a follow-up question here for the non-for-profit. Uh, is there a limit to the number of subscriptions they can get? How many? If so? I don't know, but I will um, connect you with the person who runs that, um, and I'm sure he will um, have all the answers for you there. Fantastic. We'll come back to you with that question directly, and if anyone else needs it. Um, and also, I think there's one here as well. Also, can the customer already on VIP plan trial these licenses before buying? Uh, yes, you can. You can trial before buying, I believe. If you go to click um, to upgrade to premium, it'll automatically just put you on a trial first. Um, but also, if you've got any of the other Creative Cloud apps, so Photoshop, Illustrator, Premiere Pro, literally any of them, um, Express comes uh, for free. Express Premium comes for free as part of that. So um, check what you've already got as, uh, as it relates to the Creative Cloud. And um, if you do have the Creative Cloud, then you do have Express as well. Excellent. Well, there's no more questions. So I want to say thank you so much for everyone taking the time out this busy time of the year. And thank you, Sarah, for a very um, exciting presentation today. Um, um, and also just uh, more importantly, wish everyone success as we lead into the festive season. So thank you and uh, hope to speak to you soon. Any questions, feel free to reach out to Ingram Micro or the Adobe team in supporting you and your customers. Thank you. Thanks for being such a great host, Duncan. <laughs> and thank you, Thanks, Shishan, for introducing yourself. No worries. Thank you, Sarah. Amazing presentation. Absolutely. Yes. Hang up now. So you know how to hang up. Yeah. Let's try to work out.